Happy life. Welcome to the third life with Lin Tian and Han Hui Hui. Good evening, my friends. Everyone is talking. The talk of the town is the subscription fake news. <laughs> Lin Tian, as a lawyer, can you give us your legal? What are the legal implications of this subscription fake news? You know, the first thing that comes to my mind is this is a criminal offense. All right, this is I do not you know it's cheating. It is fraud. A similar incident happened in Hong Kong more than a decade ago. All right. Again, there was circulation fraud, and the people involved there were arrested by the Hong Kong police and jailed. Now, let me put it this way: certainly, when SPH was a listed entity, a public listed company, the fraud took place. Yeah, so you can imagine how many people were affected by it. The thousands, the millions of shareholders. All right. Yeah, every one of them will have a cause of action against SPH. And honestly, <laughs> I I really cannot believe that in modern Singapore, where you know the government goes on about how clean we are and all that, these things are taking place. And sad thing, isn't it? I mean, it, it shows you that we mustn't marvel at ourselves too much. At the end of the day, human weakness, human failings, and one day after SMT. Scan a few days after the SMT scandal broke, you had the Capo, yeah, corruption case, and I made a video about that yesterday, and it is shocking. It is shocking that in a case where there has been an admission of the corruption, six senior figures in Capo are not being prosecuted. My friends, I have defended. People in corruption cases before, and I can tell you, the CPIB pursues far harder cases. All right, far harder cases. You know, I said in my TikTok video, this prosecution against the six would have been a walk in the park. All right, I could have done it blindfolded in court. You know, there was an admission. Yeah, and here you have CPIB giving. The ridiculous excuse: Oh, there's evidentiary problems. It's transnational. We may not be able to compel certain witnesses. You know something? Don't give me all that crap. You put the six people in the dock and you cross-examine them, and you see how easily the evidence will come out and how the admissions themselves will convict them. All right. So there we are. Han Wei Wei. So how much money have you collected? So we are here today because of the AGC targeting this bank account right now, and we have collected about four thousand out of twenty two thousand four hundred. So we are short of about eighteen thousand five hundred, and we are going to call on twenty fifth January to Singapore Supreme Court at nine a.m. Huh? Twenty two thousand four hundred. So far, you only collected four thousand dollars. Hey. I saw on your TikTok, you say you got one point one million views. Is this fake one like SPH or something? <laughs> so, anyway, the thing is, you shouldn't be talking about how many views. The best is we say there are no views because in Singapore they like to sue people for defamation, just like yourself. You know, <laughs> they talk about the number of views, the number of likes, the number of comment, the number of share, and the government always inflate our views, saying that we have a lot of views. But do we really have a lot of views? And why are people viewing us and not paying subscription to view straight times? Actually, even straight times is free, right? Then why are people not reading it online? There are articles that are free for people to read. And why is the government pushing so much propaganda out at this moment? Okay, a few days ago, nine ten January, we had a parliamentary sitting. One of the things that was uh, discussed or announced was that the ministerial pay will be reviewed soon. Okay. Uh, Do you know that, that the ministerial pay in the past forty eight years has increased more than five percent? Whereas for average workers, 
The salary only increased 9 cents per hour the past 48 hours in terms of real pay. And these are only for those that are having positive real pay increase. Do you know how many workers in how many industries are having negative real pay increase? And now that the government wants me to pay money on behalf of 5 Singaporeans I've never known, I've never met before, then maybe like what a lot of people are saying, I should go to the meet the people session, go and find out the law minister, go and ask him to get me a job, and what kind of job are they getting average Singaporeans right now? Because the government likes to say Singaporeans don't want to work. And a lot of people are saying, oh you know Singaporean girls are now ending up working as prostitutes. Because the reason why the Singapore government is opening up is to let people come to Singapore, not treat our girls as maids, but treat our girls as prostitutes. Is this the kind of society we want our Singapore future generation to be? Okay, let me give you some numbers about ministers' pay. In 1973, a junior minister, MR4 grade, okay, the starting pay, junior minister, 1973, one year, the whole year, was $32,500. Okay, then increase, increase. Huh? Then, by 2012, the $32,500 a year had increased to $1.7 million. <laughs> but in 2012, there was a reduction, and so by 2012, it was reduced to $1 million. And now, it is still $1 million. Uh, Lim Tian, you have anything to say about the Minister of Pay? I think it is ridiculous. And my friends, you know people's voice position on this, PV, the party ID, right? If we are in government, we will slash ministerial pay by 70%, starting with the Prime Minister's salary. And you know, the Prime Minister earns $2.2 million a year. Even after you slash it by 70%, and I have calculated, all right? He still makes about 660000 He is still number one in the world, despite a 70% slash in pay. Can you believe it? Yeah, and the next highest paid leader in the world after the Singapore Prime Minister, I believe, is the Australian Prime Minister, whose pay is 550000 All right? So, let's have some decency, okay? Let's have some decency, all right? Singapore is a rich country, but we are not so rich as to be able to pay our Prime Minister multiple times of what the Australians pay their leader. Okay, since we're on the subject of pay, yesterday the news came out, no? Hang on, we are talking about housing right now. Do you know that in 2022, 40% of Singaporeans cannot afford to pay their mortgages? And do you know that this is a large increase compared to the 30% back in 2021? So now we are in 2023. How many more Singaporeans cannot afford to pay their housing mortgages? Okay, yesterday the news came out. Fresh poly graduates finding full-time employment jobs in 2022, 59%. Real pay increase last 15 years, 0.1% per annum. I have always said, you know, let us drill down to real wages and how much they have increased over the decades. My friends, the sad truth is, all over the world, including Singapore, real wages have stagnated since the 70s and 80s. And yet we have these neoliberal leaders who come out and tell us globalization has made everyone more prosperous. Yes, it has made the elites very prosperous. The top 10%, the top 1%. But for the rest of the middle class, the lower income, your real wages have gone backwards. And you know, last year, inflation was high, right? Can you imagine how much more your real wages actually decline? And the same is going to happen this year. Because despite what Lawrence Wong and the others have told you, high inflation is here to stay, okay? And I hope it will not happen, but I believe it is going to happen. Inflation is going to get even higher. Han Wee Wee, on January 10, the media reported 
Forklift operator jail for collecting bribes of between ten cents and one dollar from drivers. Then just now Dim Tian said, six people not charged only get warning for bribes amounting to seventy three million. Any thoughts on that? Just now, my children came here and start jumping around, and they say that they are jumping like a kangaroo because this is a kangaroo court. <laughs> If they were to say that on 25th January morning at 9am, I'm not sure what's going to happen. But everybody has things to say about our judicial system. It doesn't have to be me. They can politically persecute me. They can try and silence as many people as possible. But everybody knows in their heart, the comment section online, you can see how people are talking about the kind of equality in Singapore. Which brings to the question that Singapore Gini coefficient is now at a high of 0.444. So a Gini coefficient of above 0.4 means that the country is unequal. So Singapore is highly unequal. Being a developed country and a rich country, why is Singapore such an unequal country? Are the rich becoming richer and the poor becoming poorer, especially because of the 8% increase in GST? Now, in the two days of parliamentary sitting on 9 and 10 January, uh, net citizens, some of them are saying, hey, the, some of the statistics uh, from not meaningful now become uh, meaningless. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> let's talk about meaningless statistics. Uh, the statement was made in parliament that, oh, SIRS Amokyo residents, 99% need not top up at all, right? if they choose the 99-year lease or 50-year lease. You know, I am not a great expert on the HDP, but I understand that up to now, the figures for how many percent of those affected residents taking up the government's offer has not been finalized. All right? I would very much like to see what is the final outcome and how, what is the percentage of residents taking up Desmond Lee's offer, all right? The proof of the eating is in the pudding, right? Okay, so let's, let's, let's look at that. Let's, you know, I have no time for all these statements in the mainstream media these days. Why should I believe the mainstream media which has been fibbing its circulation figures, all right? Why should I? You know, even for this corruption case in Brazil, even if you tell the public that these six got a stern warning. That's big news, right? That's big news. This is a GLC that spent 55 million US dollars bribing Petrobras to get contracts. Yeah? And you know where the news appeared? The news appeared at page A6, right at the top. And you know, it was so small the abalone advertisement on the same page was actually bigger than the news column itself. <laughs> this is the sort of media, you know, we get in Singapore. And it is disgraceful. It is disgraceful. And it is not worthy of a first world nation. It is not worthy of an educated population. And we we the junior college you went to closed down already, right? <laughs> so uh, I think you probably don't understand what we are thinking about, you know. So this I, is why the yeah. press freedom ranking of Singapore is considered as no free press. And this is also why even SPH themselves rather print the newspaper and burn it away or throw it away instead of letting all the pet owners use it to <laughs> their pets. Okay, okay. I help you lah. Okay. You see, the statement lah, 99% of residents don't have to top up if they choose 99 or 50 at least. So, Mathematically, if most of the residents have to top up, right? But you say choose either 99 or 50. So obviously 99% don't to top up. Lah. But the fact is, when SIRS was first announced in Amokyo in April last year, most of the residents had to top up. And the 15-year lease did not exist at that time. So this really meaningless. Moral of the story is that if Singaporeans don't make noise, then like what the Prime Minister said, there is no protest about the CPF outside Singapore Parliament. And that's what Singaporeans are happy about it. So in order for people to speak up, people have to literally speak up 
go down and find some issue to talk about then the government will say okay fine i need to now take some action about it you know let me say something here about parliament Zhiyan mentioned that Parliament set for two days on the 9th and 10th of January. You know, my friends, a Singapore MP gets 16,000 a month. I think it's 16,000 a month. Yeah, as an allowance for being an MP. And all Parliament does is to sit two days a month. Yes, during the budget, it may have more days and all that. I think that is ridiculous. Right? And it had and they have they conduct MPS once a week. And sometimes the MP doesn't even appear. Alright, and they get assistance to appear for that. Do you know in the British Parliament, when it is in session, alright, they have long summer breaks, yes. But when it is in, they have a long summer break of two to three months. But when they are in session, which is for the rest of the year, except for some Christmas breaks and Easter breaks, they are in session every single day. And, except for a Friday, because you know why? On a Thursday evening, the British MPs all have to travel back to their constituencies. Some can be as far as Scotland, Wales. And then on Fridays, they conduct what are called surgeries. Literally, I will meet the people session. They see their constituents on a Friday. Okay? And then they have to be back in London on a Monday for a parliamentary city. You know, so it's very nice, isn't it? When the Capo scandal breaks or the SMT scandal breaks, oh, Parliament is not in session. And then we got to wait until the next month for Parliament to convene and for MPs to ask questions. These are important matters and urgent matters. Why are they not raised in Parliament straight away? Why do we have to wait one whole month to hear what the ruling party has to say about this? And I'm telling you, the ruling party has a lot to answer for. Is Warren told Parliament, oh, local media's reach has never been higher. Between 2017 to 2020, he said the figure increased by 5%. Now, I think that likely was a misleading statement to Parliament, right? And when you make a misleading statement to Parliament, you have a responsibility to correct it and to clarify it. You know, if I'm the Speaker of Parliament, even if the Minister don't clarify or correct, I will demand a ministerial statement and say, in light of what the public now knows, can the Minister make a statement to Parliament? That is the proper norm, all right? But we have a Speaker who, I have always said, doesn't know how to do his job, all right? Yeah, okay, and it is sad. It is sad to say this, but if we want to have a proper functioning democracy, everyone know better know how to do their jobs. And then Josephine Teo, no, before Josephine Teo, let me talk about Shanmuga, who told the Singapore people, the local media has to foster trust between itself and the people. Now, how is that going to happen when the local media, as we know, has been falsifying circulation figures? How do you develop trust? Shouldn't he also offer a clarification? And finally, we come to Josephine Teo, who justified the government's position to fund SMT up to 180 million a year or 900 million for five years. Now, Will she now, in light of the falsification and what has come out in public, assure Parliament and the Singapore people not a single cent of the government's money, the taxpayers' money, will go towards funding the SMT? My understanding is that uh, in Singapore, the Parliament normally sits for 50 over days a year. Okay, Han Wee, uh, back to your junior college that closed down, okay? Let's talk about another meaningless statistic that came out in Parliament on the 9th and 10th. Uh, one MP asked, uh, how many households own two or more class in HDB, condos and landed property? And the answer given in Parliament was, oh, 
is roughly the same, right, uh, across the three HDB condo and landed property. So, Han Wei Wei, what's wrong with this statement? Why is it mathematically meaningless? Because they did not answer how many of them actually own it. Being the same is what percentage? Wow, okay, you're not as dumb as I thought you are. <laughs> you're right. But because... that is not the main question right now. Do you know why SPH, even though they are free on straight styles online for people to read, people are not reading it? Do you know that majority of Singaporeans live in HDB? Okay? And now people are not getting married, they are not having children. So there are not a lot of like four room, five room HDB. Even the government tried to came up with this generation HDB asking people to stay together, people are still not staying together and the thing has sort of like collapsed already. You can see that they are not producing this kind of house. And the fact is that in Singapore, only 45% of people stay in one room and two room HDB actually have internet. About 30% of people living in one room and two room HDB have amount of money to buy computer. So you see this discrepancy of about 15% whereby they have internet but they don't have a computer. So why are people having internet but not a computer? It's because this 15% are probably working as like grab driver, grab delivery, food panda, delivery room. So they need the internet connection, access their handphone to get orders. Then every time they need to find some Wi-Fi connection, free Wi-Fi connection, MRT station in order to have access to internet connection. But in private properties, this percentage is as high as 95-96%. As for the rest of the maybe 3-4% who doesn't have internet connection or computer at home, this is because these people living in private property have their own offices. Whereas the offices of these people living in one room, two room HDB are out in the rain. How many of the ministers actually go and do walk about in the rain? To know how it is like to deliver food in the rain? Don't have. So people ask me to go and find a job to raise funds on behalf of these five other Singaporeans because right now we are $18,500 short. Then if let's say I have to go out and something happened to me, who's going to look after my children? There are so many road accidents out there. Why are Singaporeans going all the way down and taking this kind of job? I am shocked. I am shocked at what you have just said briefly. That there is still a significant number of Singaporeans without access to internet in our country. I mean, to me, it is meaningless to talk about social mobility, all right? In this age, if you, are, if you don't have internet, you might as well go and live in a cave because that, that is the equivalent. You can't do anything in the modern world without the internet, yeah? And, you know, it surely cannot be so expensive. It surely cannot be so much money for the government to make sure that this percentage of population actually do have the internet, right? Don't come and talk to me about social mobility. That is the best way to help these people at least be on even footing, all right? And have a chance to even walk, let alone climb Taman's escalator. The oh. Singapore government claimed that they, in one quarter, produce 75,900 jobs. But out of this amount of jobs that are being produced, all of them goes to foreigners except for 4,800 jobs, which the government claim goes to residents. However, in the same quarter, the number of PRs that were granted is more than 4,800. And in order to become a PR in Singapore, you need to have jobs. So these 4,800 jobs that Singapore government said did not go to foreigners, does it mean that they are going to permanent residents? Because the Singapore government don't consider permanent residents as foreigners. And if all the jobs are going to foreigners and to PRs, then the people are saying that I need to go and work to get jobs and pay this $18,500 to the ADC. What kind of job is the government leaving for Singaporeans? My friends, I make this personal plea to you. I was Han Hui Hui's lawyer and the lawyer for the five other applicants in the vaccine case that went to the High Court. I have already explained in the two previous videos why that was a very courageous step taken by Hui Hui and why it is important. You can see for yourself today, you just go onto social media, 
you just see the amount of material and articles being produced about how angry citizens all over the world are over this vaccine mandate. The casualties now, the mountain casualties, all right? And I have said this, and I knew this was going to happen. This year and in the coming years, you are going to see a plethora of litigation over the vaccine. Yeah, when people finally wake up to what they have been forced into, all right? Now, Han Hui Hui did a very courageous thing in taking on the judicial review challenge. We failed, but it does not matter because I am telling you her application together with the five others is not going to be the last. Now, you helped me a lot when I defended Leong Zihian, Terry Su in the defamation cases. We lost those cases, but we crowdfunded. And you know, every single cent of Zihian and Terry Su's damages and legal costs were paid for, donated by the public. As was Roy Nung. Roy Nung, I think, was still short of about 146000 And he jumped onto Zihian's bandwagon and he raised that within a week. My friends, I ask you to do the same for this very brave young lady here. All right? Do not allow anything to happen to her because this money cannot be paid. We have until the 25th of January to produce that. Chinese New Year is coming. I ask her to be, I ask you to give her a big unpow. Open up your wallet and donate and make sure she clears this. It is unfortunate in Singapore that an unsuccessful litigant has to pay the Attorney General costs for raising a matter of public interest. All right? And one of the grounds we went to court on was that this vaccine doesn't prevent transmission. MOH had a different story. They wheeled out an expert who said, no, 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 the data shows this. It does prevent transmission. You know what? It has now come out in the European Parliament. <laughs> Pfizer admitting they never tested the vaccine to prevent transmission. Han Wei Wei, back to the meaningless answer in Parliament about households owning two or more cars. You hit it right the nail. Never break down the households into what percentage are HDB, condo and landed. Let me give you the numbers. 78.3% of resident households, HDB. 4.9% landed. 16.5% condo. So once you crunch the numbers, the meaningless answer that is about the same across the three types once you cry, the numbers becomes landed has 16 times more households earning two or more cars than HDB. And condo have five times more people owning two cars than HDB. Yet another meaningless statistic. Before we started, Han Yui, you telling me about some nurse suing something, right? Tell us what's happening. So in Singapore, like what was previously mentioned, the court actually say that we are not allowed to submit evidence after 31st December. And the reason why is because the statistics proves that being unvaccinated is actually better than being vaccinated. Which the government keep on asking people to take the vaccine in order to show that the world we are very good, we are first class, the government is so kind and generous to give us the vaccine. However, a lot of people suffer vaccine side effects from it. And one of them is even the SGH nurse who is now suing and it has appeared in the news that they are fighting over a monthly sum of $1,500. And the court actually ruled that because of, because of her taking the vaccine, she lost her job because she became wheelchair bound. So how many people actually lost their job because they suffer from vaccine side effects? How many people lost their ability to walk? And how many people died as well? Recently, there are young teenagers dying because of the COVID vaccine but then they are being brushed off as other cases and then there are even internet brigade trying to say that people are dying not because of the covid vaccine young people in singapore are dying because they choose to commit suicide really so our suicide rate will increase this year in fact statistically in 2021 
suicide rate among the youth, which are among the teenagers aged 10 to 19, went on a high of 112 a year. Which means almost every day, every few days, alternate days, some teenagers are out there committing suicide and literally just die. So why is Singapore such a society whereby our youngs are dying like this? Not only they are dying because they serve NS, they are dying because they choose to commit suicide because they can't see a future in Singapore. What kind of government is Singapore, is PAP being, that youth in Singapore choose to die than to actually survive and vote? Okay, thank you very much for uh, watching this third live with Lim Tian and Han Wee Wee. We have to end now because the owner of this place has to go for a reunion. If we go on, she probably end up having dessert only and no dinner. So thank you very much. Thank uh, send you. us your comments, send us your questions. Bye bye. Good evening. See you. And on 25th January, we will keep you updated on what's going to happen. And it will all depend on the AGC. So the AGC claim that they are watching all this video. So the AGC, the ball is in your court. Everything is up to you, what you want us to do. And if you want to watch more videos, remember to like, follow and subscribe. We will see you after Chinese New Year, regardless of whether we raise the 22k or not. See you. Bye-bye.